Amen? Amen. He ascended into heaven and left the Holy Spirit behind here as the administrator of the covenant. You know, somebody, usually, usually, if there's a lot of resources that someone's leaving behind, they'll hire uh, an attorney or something like that to serve as the administrator, the one who's in charge of distributing whatever was left behind, the one that's in charge of overseeing that the details of that will are fulfilled. That's the Holy Spirit's place in our life. Amen? Amen. And this is why, this is why uh, some people that, uh, maybe have been taught not to pay so much attention to the Holy Spirit, very rarely, very rarely will live the abundant life that Jesus promised to give us because they're not paying attention to the administrator. I mean, if you knew that there's an administrator, you knew that there's a, there was somebody in Tom's River sitting in an office someplace that has the ability to determine how much is going to get released to you and that will, what would you be doing with that person? Would you ignore them? No, you'd be baking them cookies every day. <laughs> you'd be stopping by the office. How are you doing? Can I get you a cup of coffee? How are you feeling? I want to make sure you're healthy. Yes or no? <laughs> Yet you've got, you've got a good portion of the church. Now, thank God it's not as much as it used to be years ago. There's a lot more people that are in tune with the Holy Ghost today. Yeah, yeah you missed that. There's a lot more people that are in tune with the Holy Ghost today. Yeah. Okay, because he's the administrator. He's the one who's here on earth. Where's Jesus? He's in heaven. Where? Seated at the right hand of the Father. Well, who's running the show down here? The Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit to the disciples and to the church at the Last Supper. Why? Because he knows within 24 hours, this whole thing's going to wrap up. 40 days later, he ascends into heaven. Who's, gonna be, who's left here? Us. So I, I don't understand how we could be Christians and not, and not have fellowship and not have a strong, close relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Which is, and I'm getting ahead of myself here, which is the ultimate fulfillment of the covenant that God made with Abraham. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right, let's jump in here, okay? So, so watch this now. Blood covenant between God and Abraham, the foundation for the relationship of God with his chosen people, appears in the New Testament as a new covenant. This time between God and those who chose to serve him in Christ. That's going to show up again. Watch this now. In the Old Testament, or the first covenant, the pe- watch, this is good. Watch this. The people were chosen of God. God chose his people. But watch this. And he chose them to represent him to the world. In the New Testament, the covenant people are the ones who choose God. You got that. In this covenant, we choose God. In the old covenant, he chose them. And that's why there's such a small group of people, because they were supposed to represent God. They were supposed to take the, the, the gospel to, uh, of the kingdom to, God, to, the, to the world. Okay? But now, in this dispensation, in this age that we live in now, which started when Jesus said it's finished on the cross, we choose him. You, you watching this? And we represent Christ to dying world. Have you done any representing lately? You got quiet. In this dispensation, we are to represent the risen Christ to a world that's dying. That's why the early church, their main message was twofold. Two, they didn't do like today in the churches today. Oh, we got to teach about relationships, and we got to teach about forgiveness, and we got to teach about love, and we got to yeah, that's, those are rough. should we teach on those? Absolutely. But the early church had only two messages: He's risen from the dead, and He's coming back soon. Amen. And you you know what I sense the Holy Spirit's doing in these days? Trimming down, trimming down the message to what He is risen and He's coming back, Amen. and He's coming back for those who are looking for Him. Are you listening? Yes. This is a, what a time we live in right now. So awesome. Old Testament, God chooses people. New Testament, we choose him. New covenant is between God and Jesus, whereas the old covenant was between God and Abraham. A covenant is an agreement with spiritual consequences. Do we understand that? I, I hope we do, and I hope we get more and more of an understanding. The penalty for failure to observe the terms of that covenant is death to the guilty party. Death. We're all born on our way to die. 
Every single person, we're all born, everyone that's been conceived, we're all born on the way to die. There's, so there's nothing you do to go to hell. You just, you're born going to hell. But we have to do something to get off of that conveyor belt before we take our last breath. And that's a choice that only you can make. God can't make it for you. He did everything he's going to possibly do and did way over and above anything that we've deserved. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, the fact is that Jesus' death on the cross is actually about his being man's representative to God. In other words, Jesus being 100% man as well as 100% God took all the punishment for our breaking the covenant with God upon himself. I'll say it again. Some of you look at me like, okay. (laughs) Jesus went to the cross as a representative of mankind. Okay? You, You got that part. He takes upon himself all of what it meant for him to fulfill one of his titles. He's the son of God, and then what else is he referred to in the scripture? The son of man. 100% God, 100% man. How is that possible? I don't know. When we get there, we can ask him. All we know is that the scriptures are completely very, very, very clear. 100% God, 100% man. Amen? Amen. Okay, so so he took upon himself all of the penalty for those who break covenant. And every human being breaks covenant. Well, I'm a good person. Uh, Okay, good. Every human being, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of God's standard. Every person, every person. You may be a better moral person than somebody else, but you're still born in sin. You still have what we used to call in the old church original sin or sin nature. Amen? So now now maybe we can understand Deuteronomy. Here's another thing. If you don't understand covenant, then you don't understand Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 is an extremely important portion of Scripture. Now, I cut my teeth on Deuteronomy 28. When I got born again four decades ago, okay, as a very young man, the season of the, that the church was in back then, it was a lot of teaching about Deuteronomy 28. A lot of teaching about the blessings of God. A lot of teaching uh, about what is available to us. I want to make sure I word this right. A lot of teaching back then about what is available to us as children of God. Okay? And you can't cover that kind of a topic without looking at Deuteronomy 28. All right? Um, oh, you got it up there. Awesome. All right, let's read through this. Because we're not in a hurry, right? No, no, no. Okay. Could, could you, John, could you put that air on? It's kind of hot up here with these lights. Watch this now, because these first few words are going to be extremely important. Watch this now. Because this one here, this is a scripture that, although I had a lot of, I, I, I heard a lot of teaching about it, it used to puzzle me, and I'll tell you why. Here's the commandment that came from God to Moses to the people of Israel. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. Now, watch this now. That promise is still in effect. That's why you've got to watch who messes with Israel. Because the world might have forgotten about this promise But God didn't forget about the promise. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Now, stop there. Now, go back. Now, I'm going to throw this out at you, and then we're going to go into this in much more depth and detail. Is it possible for you to fulfill verse 1? No. No. It's not. Yet, for thousands of years, people have tried to. And that's what has caused religion to develop in the name of a relationship with God Almighty. Are you, are you seeing this? So well, then what does God do? I used to go, but God, what is, are you playing games with us? How are you showing us all these blessings, but I can't qualify for them? 
So let's read through it real quick, okay? If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all, all, say all. all. Now, can we keep some of the commands? No. Yeah. Yeah, some? Yeah. All? No. no. Okay. Next verse. Verse 2. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord. Now, that's not New King James, is it? That living translation? I, I want New King James. If you can, please, Dennis. There's a reason I'm asking you. Does anybody have New King James on your lap there someplace? Okay, how does it read? How does it read? Verse 2. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake. Oh, we got it now. You got it now. And all these blessings, say all, all. shall come upon you and what? Overtake. overtake you. Now, does overtake, does it sound like I need to go chase it after them? Yeah. No. What's happening? They chase it after me. Yeah. And every time I read this, I think about going to the beach and you, you're standing there by the water line and the waves are coming and then you make that mistake of turning around because maybe one of your kids or something is running or, and, the, you, and, you, and you, you take your eyes off of there and all of a sudden this gigantic wave does what? Just comes up and does what? overtakes you. That's the picture. That's the picture. I don't have to go chasing after them because they overtake me. But pastor, you don't qualify for them. I don't. But somebody did. And we'll talk about that. Okay, you getting this? Um, we must, let's go through all the way to verse 14, okay? Real quick, let's go. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of, the, of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Keep going. Blessed shall be your basket and the kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way, but they shall flee seven ways. Keep going. The Lord will command bl the blessing, the blessing, not a blessing, the blessing on you and your storehouses. Amen. What is that? Bank account, Amen. okay? And in all which you set your hand, he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Keep going. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Jesse has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God. In other words, if you keep your side of the covenant... This is what you can expect. That all the peoples of the earth shall see that you're called by my name, by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods, the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and in the produce of, the, of your ground and in the land which the Lord, swore, the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open up to you his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. That's the curse that's on this country. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today and are careful to observe them. Verse 14. You shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or the left to go after other gods to serve them. So what are the details of this promise, this covenant? You've got to be solely, solely obedient, 100% obedient to God, 100% committed to God, 100% devoted to God, okay? I hate to disappoint you. We can't do it. We can't do it. Now, start in verse 15. But it shall come to pass if you do not. See, when, you, when, you, when you're coming into covenant, you have to give all the details. This is what you're going to get if you abide by the covenant. However, this is what you're going to get if you choose to reject the covenant and break the covenant. Now, there were 14 verses of blessing from verse 1 to verse 14. Starting in verse 15, all the way down to verse, I think it's 66, are all curses. 
But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today that all these curses will, look at the wording again, will do what? Come upon you and what? Overtake you. In other words, you ain't gonna go looking for them. <laughs> Nobody gets up in the morning and goes, oh God, I wish my car would break down today. <laughs> Oh, God, I pray that when I go to the doctor, I get a bad report. Oh, God, I pray that, uh, oh, my uh, 401K gets wiped out. <laughs> curse shall you be in the city. Curse shall you be in the country. And, and curses shall be your bad. In other words, your food is cursed. Your, your land is cursed. Uh, your, pr- everything, your potential is cursed. Uh, everything. I don't want to go through the whole thing. It's not good. And it goes into detail. It talks about headaches, toothaches, bones, aches, hemorrhoids. Everything's in there. Boils, lumps, tumors. It's all under the curse. That's why it's such a disgrace when somebody says, well, the Lord put sickness on my body so I can learn something. No, no, that is no place in the word of God. Sickness, disease, death, All of that stuff is all part of the curse that came on mankind because of sin. You got this? Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. Now, understand this. First verse said that we need to be completely obedient in order to take advantage and and have, have access to all these blessings. But God knew we couldn't do it. And when he gave the law to Moses, the Ten Commandments, and they took the Ten Commandments and made 600 and something commandments out of it, it wasn't God playing mind games like, hey, you want this, you want this, you want this? It was God, the reason, what's the reason for the law? The reason for the law and the reason for the commandments and the reason for all these things is to show us you can't do this without me. You need a savior. Would you say that with me? Savior. We need a savior. Now, let me ask you this question. Did you only need a savior the day before you got born again? No. I don't know about you. I need a savior today like I needed a savior back then. Yes. I need him to be my savior every day. What about you? Yes. We can't do this. It's impossible. Are you getting this? Yes. Now, watch. Exodus chapter 19, don't go there, not yet. Uh, I'm going to go to Exodus 24, but not yet. In Exodus chapter 19 is when Moses goes up to the mountain, the Mount Sinai. If you came here just for this, I pray it's going to be a blessing to you. Now, watch this now. Moses gets up there, the whole, the whole the nation of Israel now has come out of Egypt. Okay, they come to Mount Sinai. They get to Mount Sinai. And there is a fireworks display going on. Moses goes up on the mountain, and now God comes down to meet with Moses, okay? The mountain is shaking, earthquakes, lightning, fire, blast of a trumpet that the people could, ear piercing, frightening. God says to Moses, tell him not to come near this mountain. Tell him to stand apart from this. And if anybody touches this mountain... You got to thrust them through with a spear. Kill them. That's some serious, there's serious stuff going on here. And what happens? Go to verse 24. Now, watch this now. From, 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 from Exodus chapter 19 to Exodus chapter 24 is how many chapters? Five? Five. Five chapters full of, and thou shalt not, and thou shalt not, and thou shalt not, and you can't do this. And if you do this, this is what's going to happen. And this is how you treat your slaves. And this is how you treat your, 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 your people. And this is how you treat your cattle. And this is what you're supposed to do before you build a house. And this is what you just on and on and on and on and on. What do they do? They build a calf. Moses comes down. You know the story. That, those tablets, boom. That was it. Goes back on the mountain. God puts the whole thing together for him again. And look what happens. Remember now, five chapters of laws. 
Exodus 24, verse 1. Then he said to Moses, so then God, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and watch, worship from where? Afar. Afar. Limited relationship, right? Worship from where? Afar. Afar. We're told in Ephesians chapter 2 that now we draw near to God because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. We, in fact, it's, we who were a, a once afar off Amen. have now been brought near by what? The blood, the blood of Jesus. You getting this? Yes. Next verse. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, nor shall the people go up with him. Next verse. So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgment. Stop there, right? Stop there. Five chapters full of laws. Five chapters full of laws. I would have been overwhelmed. Most people would have been overwhelmed. Most people, unless we're, because we're in this dispensation, but watch, watch, how, watch how Israel responds. And now you get why the rest of the history goes the way it goes. So Moses came and told, told the people all the words of the Lord and all the what? Judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, say it nice and loud with me. All the words which the Lord has said we will do. Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? That's not the answer. The answer should have been fall on your face and go, God, please, we can't do this. If this is what it's going to take to come into a relationship with you, we're done. We're lost. What do they do? Oh, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. You can tell how much thought they put into this. Yeah, we'll do it. Tell, you know, tell them we'll do it. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. And he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain. The only reason you build an altar is because you're going to commemorate something. You're going to memorialize something. Are you catching this? Yes. This is serious. This is one of the worst moments in the history of mankind. And he rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain because he ain't going up that mountain. And 12 pillars according to the tribes of Israel. What's he doing? He's going to call every tribe into account. Watch what happens next. Then he, sent the young, uh, then he sent young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses, this is good, this is important. And Moses took half the blood, the blood of what? The sacrifices, and half the blood and put it in basins, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar because you, you got to sanctify what you do for God. And there's only one way to sanctify, blood, blood. Yes, now watch right. And he took the book of the covenant and read it. In, the, in other words, he's doing it again. Are you sure about this? I read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said we will do and be. Obedient. You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. Because he's already given the details. This is what you get if you're obedient. This is what you get if you disobey. And Moses took the blood. Here we go. This sealed, this sealed it. This sealed their history and sealed mankind. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it where? On the people. This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you according to all these words. The agreement is sealed. And they can't do it. It's impossible for them to bring it to pass. It's impossible for us to obey all those commands. It's impossible for us to for always be obedient. We don't even have the mechanism for it. Yet they sealed themselves into this agreement, literally signing their death sentence. So what's got to happen now? The answer is not going to come from mankind. God's already laid out the details. So unless somebody comes... In place of mankind, all of mankind is cut off and going to hell. You getting this? Yes. Who was that person? Jesus. I'm going to skip around here. No, maybe I'm not. Matthew chapter 27, verse 20. 
Man, I saw this today and I went, oh my God. What's happened here? Jesus has, has been tried. The people are determined to crucify him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitudes. What happened? Pilate's presenting to them, you can either have Jesus released to you or you could have this criminal, degenerate murderer released to you. You know the answer. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas. It's, it's, it's so ironic, this name. Barabbas, Barabbas, the son of the father. Who is the real son of the father? Jesus. Jesus. But mankind will always go for the substitute. Mankind will always go the way of the flesh. The governor answered and said to them, which of you two do you want me to release? And they said, Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ, Christos, Messiah, anointed one? And they all said to him, let him be crucified. Next verse. The governor said, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult, in other words, a riot was rising, he took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And how do they answer? And all the people answered and said, his blood be on us and our children. What blood? The blood of the Lamb of God sacrificed for broken covenant because they had thousands of years before put themselves under the blood curse when they said, tell him we'll do it all. You can't do it all. You can't do it all. And when somebody today insists, I'm, I don't need this born again stuff. I don't need Jesus. I don't need, I got strong shoulders. I'm a good person. I'm, I got good willpower. I have discipline. You know what you do? You put yourself under that blood curse. Because you're doing exactly what the Israelites did. Yeah, I'm a good person. I can do this. I can fulfill all these laws. I never lie. I never cheat. You just did. You lied and you cheated. <laughs> do you see how serious this is? Do you see? How, this is covenant. Now, flip this on the other side. Because we're as passionate as the punishment and the curse and as, 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 as real as that is, is as real and as devoted and as committed as his love is towards us. Amen. But pastor, we broke the covenant. Yeah, we did. When the devil comes to rub it in our face and show us and remind us of all our sin, yeah, that was me. I did it. You're right. But there's somebody who paid for me. Yeah. Are you getting this now? Yes. Galatians chapter 3. Oh, my God. Since it is possible for us to fully obey God's every command, Jesus had to come and take upon himself all the curses that we should have suffered. In return, we enjoy all the blessings that should have been only his. He's the only one that qualified for Deuteronomy 28's blessings. But because we're in him, we receive those blessings. Amen. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. You following me here? Yes. Christ has redeemed us from the what? Curse. curse of the law, having become a curse. Now, don't miss this weekend. Because we're going to talk about this. Amen. Remember, on the weekends, we're studying types and shadows of Jesus in, in, the, new, in the old covenant, in the first covenant. Okay, this verse is going to tie into that, okay? Christ has redeemed us from the curse. What does it mean to be redeemed? To be brought back, to be bought back, to be purchased, to be taken off the slave block, amen? amen? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Did he deserve to have the curse on him? No, no absolutely. He's the only one that's ever been born that didn't deserve. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Would it be wrong for us to say, knowing biblical symbolism, cursed is everyone who's nailed to the cross? Same thing. 
Yes or no? Yes. Next verse. That the blessing, that the blessing, say that the blessing, that the blessing of, Abraham of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Watch this now. This is how we got to where we were last week. That we might receive the prom come on, come on, come on. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, through faith, through faith, through faith. What is the ultimate fulfillment of the promise of God to mankind? That the Spirit of God will once again come and live inside human beings. Why? Because that's what Adam lost when he sinned. The first Adam came and brought death upon mankind. The second Adam came and redeemed us out of that death. But in order to redeem us from that death, he had to take it all upon himself. People walk around and go, your life is unfair. Life is unfair. Don't even say that in front of Jesus. Life is unfair. You getting this? And it's all because of covenant. Jesus obeyed the covenant perfectly. But then he took upon himself the punishment for mankind, breaking covenant with God. And the end goal of that promise is the Holy Spirit indwelling the believer. And it's all about blood. The Bible puts a very strong emphasis on blood. Leviticus chapter 17. Leviticus, your favorite chapter in the Bible. (laughs) Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10. And whatever man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell among you who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you. Given what to you? Not the flesh, the blood. I have given the blood to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. It's the blood that is payment for the soul. It is the blood that is the ransom for our souls. It's the blood. 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 Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the power of the blood. Thank God that that blood blood is just as alive today as it was thousands of years ago. It's the blood. And the devil hates the blood. The devil hates the blood. So I go study history. Every time Jerusalem got invaded or attacked, first place they went, the temple. Do what? Stop the sacrifice. Stop that blood being shed. Stop that blood being shed. She get a hint there. Something wrong. There's something here. If the first thing they go after is the blood, then that tells us something. That the blood's important. Amen? Amen? This is the reason why, okay, now we're good where we live in this, in this area we live in, this con- the part of the country we live, okay? This is the reason why most food has to be prepared kosher. Why? Can't, can't put any blood in it. And we don't realize how, how, how blessed we are because we lived in another part of the country where there wasn't too many Jewish people. We didn't eat chicken for two years. You remember when we lived in Tulsa? We go to the supermarket and go, what the heck is going on with this stuff here? It's chickens, pe- chicken pieces, sitting in, 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 you know, the containers with the plastic on top? Full of blood. I'm like, who's going to eat this garbage? And the people are eating it up. And I'm like, oh, my God, we didn't realize how blessed we were back in New Jersey. Because <laughs> here in the Northeast, everything is, everything is prepared kosher. What do you do? You kill the, the animal a certain way. That blood has got to be totally drained out. It's got to be prepared a specific way. Thank God. Thank God. Say, thank God. God. And and let me tell you something. Um, We went so long. We'd go to the supermarkets, everything. We'd drink blood, steaks, swimming in blood. What is it? Is Is they all like demon worshipers out here? What is going on? But there there was no call to prepare stuff kosher where there wasn't that much of a Jewish population there. You listening? Say, thank God for New Jersey. <laughs> say, 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 thank God we live next door to Lakewood. Because <laughs> I like fried chicken.
littlest things that follow us down to this day that we don't even realize are a result of God's influence upon mankind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. You got anything tonight? Yes. Glad you came out? Yes. You're sad for the people who didn't? Yes. Make sure you rub it into them. Tell them when you go home tonight. Well, you picked a bad night to miss church. Hebrews 9, 22. According to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no what? Remission. Remission. Somebody's blood had to be shed for us to be taken out of the blood. For us to be taken out of the blood of our sin, somebody had to shed their blood. Amen. The Word of God. Hold your Bibles up again. Hold your phone up if you have a Bible app in it. The Word of God in its purest form is all about the details of this agreement between us and God. Amen. Well, you know, Pastor, I got born again, I got saved, and you know, I come to church once in a while, but it's just, I, can't, I don't have time to read the Bible. Yeah. Then you don't know what, you don't even know what you're part of. You don't even know, you don't know what, you don't know God. You don't know what he's got for you. You don't know his character. You don't know his personality. You don't know his promises. You don't know what you can depend on him for. Amen. You don't know how to please him. Because yeah. all the details of our relationship with him are revealed here. Amen. And then, that's, that's the first covenant. Then when we get to past the Gospels, he gives us the details now for the new and better covenant with better promises. Amen. That's why like, these Bible reading plans are so great because they give you something in, 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 the, in the Old Testament. They give you a proverb. They give you a psalm. And then something in the New Testament. You need that. It's a balanced diet. Okay, you listening? Nobody wants to eat broccoli every day, right? But nobody should eat cannolis every day either. What do you need? A balanced diet. You, if you don't know this, you don't know who God is, and you don't know what he's all about. And you're, okay, you're going to go to heaven. Do you want to spend the first third of eternity learning what you didn't learn here? I want, to, I want to be able to go to Jesus and go, come on, show me, show me the stuff that happened in the old. Show me the stuff. Show me when, when Egypt got judged. Show me what that was like. Show me what it was like when the Red Sea got parted. Show me what it was like when the walls of Jericho fell down. Show me, oh, show me what it was like when Elijah got taken up. Show me that one. I want to see that one. Oh, and if you got time, show me what it was like when one angel killed 185,000 soldiers. I want to see that one. Please, I'm begging you, as your pastor, become a student of this word. Amen. Learn what the covenant is all about. He has committed himself to us. Now, we've only got a few more minutes, so I'm just going to go over some stuff that we're going to talk about next week. There's two different words in the scriptures that talk about covenant. There's a covenant... That's more on human terms, a covenant between two human beings. That is a two-sided covenant. Yes. But that's not the covenant that God makes with us. Our covenant, the word that's used to describe it in the new covenant is diatheke. Yes. It's a Greek word. Okay, it means one-sided covenant. One party does all the giving, the other party does all the taking. And right now there's somebody going, I just got out of a relationship like that. <laughs> I was doing all the giving. <laughs> and the other one was doing all the taking. Okay. And that's not good in human relationships. But it's God ordained. Why? Hallelujah. Because 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 says, God is love. And love can only manifest itself in giving. Amen. In giving. Amen. See, he's very content. In fact, this is the way he designed the covenant. All I want you to do is trust in me. If you'll trust in me, if you'll declare your faith in me, 
If you'll place your confidence in me, then everything I have is yours. Amen. That's love. Amen. That's love. And that love is available to you always. Amen. That love is available to you if you're sitting here tonight in this room and you've never, never prayed a simple prayer of just placing your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've never done that before, that love, his love is available to you tonight. Or maybe you have, maybe you are a, what you would consider yourself a believer, a follower of Jesus, but maybe you've gotten off track and now you're suffering from the guilt and condemnation of the devil constantly rubbing in your face what you did wrong. His love is still available to you. Can you, can you Dennis, can you put 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 up there? Because I've been sensing lately in my spirit, I've been sensing lately that there's a lot of people that are going through guilt and condemnation. There's a lot of Christians that are wasting time spinning their wheels because they've gotten off someplace, they did something they shouldn't have did, they went someplace they shouldn't have went, they, whatever. And, and the devil keeps throwing it in your face and it, it's blocking you from progressing. First John. Uh, now I wanted uh, one nine. First John one nine. The verse before it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and to do what? Forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. Pastor, does that mean when I sin that I, I, I became unrighteous now? I be, does it mean I lost my salvation? Does it mean I need to get born again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again? No, no, no. You're missing the key word there, cleanse. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? When you step out of that position that God's placed you in of righteousness and you go hang out where you're not supposed to, conduct yourself the way you're not supposed to, get yourself involved in things you're not supposed to, you pick up junk. Now, that junk doesn't affect your spirit, it affects your soul. Because remember, according to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14, one offer, by one offering, he, he forever perfected those who are being sanctified. Amen. Okay, remember, the perfection is our spirit, man. The sanctification part is our soul. Right? So in our soul, we pick up things. How many of you, as a Christian, uh, regret doing certain things, going to certain places, hanging out with certain individuals that got you into trouble? How, how many? You picked up, and they affected your soul. Yeah. Right? They affected your soul. You may be to this day knowing, you know, I've never been the same since that thing happened there. That's the cleansing, the cleansing. You got to receive that cleansing. Because you see, you're seeing yourself that way, but God's not seeing you that way. And, and this, I, mean, I think I mentioned this in one of the services in the past few weeks. This is what Jesus meant at the Last Supper, when he was washing the, the disciples' feet, and Peter said to him, you're not washing my feet, because that's the act of like the lowest slave. You're not washing my feet. And he said, Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no place in me. And he said, well, Lord, then wash my head. You know, give me a whole bath here. And, and Jesus said to him, no, you don't need that. You just need your feet washed. Why? What? What? Because in that, in that culture, look, hardly anybody wore shoes. And you live in an agricultural society where you never know what you're going to step in. Do I have to get graphic? I mean, and so, so when you're traveling through everyday life, you can step in some junk. And that's basically what it's telling us. You know, as we're traveling through this world, though, though we're in the world, we're not of the world, you're going to pick up some things. So it's not that we don't need to get born again, again, and again, and again, and again, and again. We just need to get our feet washed. First John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all the junk we pick up as we walk through life. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. So listen, we're going to dismiss, but here's what we're going to do. Number one, this is not time in human history to be fooling around with your eternity. Amen. If you know that you know that you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never taken that step, maybe you've danced around it, you know, you come to church and stuff, this, but you've never made that commitment to the Lord. Not to us, but to him. Please don't walk through those doors without making that commitment tonight. 
I'll say it again. We don't know what kind of world we're going to wake up to tomorrow morning. Lord, if you're here and you are a believer already and you realize, man, I've been picking up some junk, I need to get cleansed. I need to get that junk out of my soul. I need to get away from that. I need to distance myself from that. Amen? Amen. We'll pray for you. Either way. Amen? Amen. I hope this was a blessing to you tonight. I do pray, please, please come back next Wednesday night again because we're, you know, I only got halfway through this notes for tonight. So, so we'll pick up here and let's just go. Are you starting to see the difference already? Yes. You're starting to say you've seen the word differently already? Yes. Okay, good, because we got a ways to go yet. Amen? Amen. Those of you that are going to come up for prayer, come on up. The rest of you, God bless you. We'll see you out in the lobby.